Azure RM and AZ API, two excellent providers, but which one is best? There's only one way to find out. So in this video, we're gonna be comparing Azure RM version four and AZ API version two. And the idea is to help you understand which one you think might be the best fit for your requirements. It's a very personal choice. Um, what I hope to do in this video is explain my experiences of using both providers uh, in order to help you make the right choice for you. We're gonna start with an overview of both providers and then we're gonna cover a few topics. We're gonna to look at documentation, ARM compatibility, the features and the developer experience. And then I'll wrap up at the end. I guess the first place I'd like to start is with this blog article by Stephen Mark. So Stephen is Terraform PG at Microsoft. Uh, this blog has also been repeated on the HashiCorp site as well. So it's basically a co-release by both Microsoft and HashiCorp. I should point out that this video is just my personal view and is not affiliated with either organization. So this is worth a read. Um, essentially, we're saying two powerful Terraform providers. Yep, agree with that. Um, this article offers guidance uh, as to which one you should use. Fantastic. So at a high level, Azure RM provides a stable, well-tested layer on top of the Azure APIs. It handles the entire resource lifecycle uh, while managing breaking changes. Ensuring smooth operations, our Azure RM is ideal for users looking for stability and a simplified configuration management. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. I think that's fair. On the other hand, AZ API is a lightweight wrapper around the Azure APIs. Direct and early access to the latest Azure features. Yeah, I absolutely. Uh, quicker adoption of new services and workarounds for Azure RM limitations, which we'll come into a bit later. Ideal for users who need cutting edge functionality, uh, and we'll deep dive into them below. Right, proven simplified approach for Azure RM. Abstracts complexity by managing things like API versions on your behalf. Um, better documentation uh, and simplicity. Okay, this is the real big one, I think for Azure RM simplicity. AZ API, um, when you need stuff that Azure RM can't do ultimately um, is the principal reason for using it. But there's more than that. And, and this is what I want. This is where I think this, this blog article perhaps misses a trick because um, it does cover some of the new features in here. So resource versioning, uh, user-defined retrieval errors, header support, URL control, um, all this kind of stuff I think is, is probably not mentioned enough and I'm going to make a bit more of a point of that. Um, okay, so when to use each provider. Again, kind of repeating the messaging here. RM if you want stability, simplicity, automatic versioning, AZ API if you want cutting edge features, um, latest stuff from Azure. Okay, so I'm now going to take this article. This is the this is the line from Microsoft and HashiCorp and I'm going to take this article now and go through the providers on my own uh, and I will give you my take on that. So first of all, let's cover the key differences between them in terms of the way that they've been designed. Azure RM is uh, handcrafted. Each resource is handcrafted. Each documentation uh, page is also handcrafted and tested. So that's where the simplicity stuff comes from because you know a developer has had to go and look at the SDK. In fact, the Azure RM uses, doesn't use the Microsoft SDK, it uses its own SDK and then bring the features from that and create a Terraform schema, which is their opinion of how they think the resource should look in Terraform. It's actually got nothing to do with the ARM uh, REST API because there's that layer in between that transitions from the Terraform schema to the uh, REST eventual REST call that's been made. So because of that, there is always gonna be a delay between a thing being released in Azure and it being supported in Azure RM because somebody has got to go and make a thing or update a thing. And this is the same with new features, new API versions, whatever. And it's just, that's how it's been designed. And to be fair, that's how most providers have been designed for Terraform historically. AZ API is a resource, is a provider that has been built on essentially Autogen. So it looks at, it's got some generic resources in there and it looks at the REST API specs and it generates the schemas from there and they are all dynamic. So that has the advantage of ultimately being able to support absolutely anything in ARM, um, but you just have to realize that AZ API is, it can't have the level of documentation because it's auto-generated. However, there are a few tricks that we can use to uh, 
to make life a little bit easier. So let's start at the first category, documentation. Azure M has excellent documentation because it's been crafted by a, a human being and it is very, very, very good. Absolutely, hands down, Azure M is the winner in terms of documentation. But there are some there are some features that I don't think people know enough about with AZ API. So let's say I wanted to create an application gateway in AZ API. And in my search engine, I put application gateway. And I won't put Terraform in here because I'll get probably the provider docs for Azure RM. But if I put bicep, what it will do is it will link me to this page. And if I zoom in a bit, uh, I want that key there, sorry. If I zoom in a bit, you can see we've got the application gateways resource. And I can look at the Terraform. So this is the AZ API documentation. It's just not in the HashiCorp portal, it's here. So my top tip is to search for the resource type you want and then the word bicep actually. Uh, and then you can have a look at this. So you can it tells you it's deployed at a resource group scope. It's then got the entire resource format. Uh, the one thing I will say is uh, we're still working on getting rid of this JSON encode bit. You don't need that anymore. It's, this is just an HCL object. So you can just get rid of this function around it. And then the corresponding closing bracket at the end. So this is a real complicated resource. And you might be thinking, oh my goodness, what does all this do? Uh, but let's scroll. So let's scroll down here and you will see. So this is, for example, the backend HTTP settings. These are what all the properties are. This is a description of it. And this is the, this is the value type, right? And you can see that Authentication certificate is a sub resource, and you can click on that and it will take you to the definition of what that is. So, connection draining, we can click on connection draining, and it then tells you that that's an object with drain timeout seconds and whether it's enabled or not. And you can tell one's an in and one's a ball. So, there is documentation for AZ API. Um, it is not as good as Azure RM, it just isn't, but it is there, and that is a really, really useful trick. So, let's move on now to ARM compatibility. So Azure RM, it's okay. It's for most stuff, it's it's fine, but there are, are a lot of times that you are, will be waiting for stuff to be added because it doesn't exist. Now, if you're not a Go developer and you can't make that pull request yourself, you can be waiting months, which is incredibly frustrating. Um, it's just the way it is. Um, I don't know, I, there's, there's not much you can do about it. Um, the only thing the only thing I've seen people do is to use AZ API for just the things that they want to have the extra features for, which is cool. Um, however, if you've already deployed that thing, you're then into a time where you need to migrate the state over from an Azure RM resource to an AZ API resource. And yeah, you can do it. I'm not saying you can't do it. You can do it, but it's a pain. <laughs> um, so you need to research whether Azure RM supports the stuff you want from the beginning. And if it doesn't, you need to make a different choice. AZ API, obviously perfect, supports everything. Uh, you can even do non-put uh, requests. So you can do posts, you can do also basically anything you want to do with the Azure APIs, you can do with AZ API. Features. So Azure RM has got provider functions now, which is really good. So you can do things with resource IDs, like parsing them and chopping up into bits. Other than that, I don't think there's much to add with v4 in terms of features they've you know renamed a few things and changed a few things around um one thing i would like to point out is it's a it's a bit of a regression i think to mandate the subscription id i'm sure they had good reasons for it but for a developer a terraform developer it's a pain like if i'm deploying a resource at a management scope management group scope why do i need a subscription id doesn't make sense um if I haven't got any subscriptions and I want to create one, so I'm thinking a Terraform Stacks style scenario here where I create a subscription and I put something in it in a separate uh, component, I, I have to have a subscription to begin with. It just seems odd. Uh, I don't know why they did it. Um, so yeah, I'm not a massive fan of that. A plus point for Azure RM though is uh, data plane. Azure RM's got great data plane access. Uh, it sometimes does it when it doesn't have to. <laughs> so um, a weird issue that I, I still don't understand fully is when Azure RM creates like a blob container or a key in a key vault, it actually has to talk to the data plane, even though it's not necessary because Bicep can do it. Bicep doesn't talk to the data plane. And AZ API can do it and that doesn't talk to the data plane. So 
yeah, that's not that's only a problem if you use something like private endpoints. So you configure your storage account, you put a private endpoint on it, then you try and create a blob container, and Azure Run will fail because it hasn't got access to the data plane. Why? Why? Why does it need to do that? Anyway, in general, though, data plane support for Azure RM is is much much better than AZ API. So if that's really important to you, that's that's the key decision point. AZ API, so 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 many features. Um, Things like doing AZ API resource action with the when equals apply or destroy. So you can do something like do a post request or something when something's on a destroy plan. Like it's just just amazing. Uh, so much flexibility in there. You can do now do James path queries for the resource body output. So if you just want to output a specific thing from the resource body, you can write a JSON query and just pull that exact thing out that you want. You can now modify headers and query parameters. So why would you want to do that? Well, virtual network peering resync is actually a URI parameter. So if you wanted to orchestrate that within an AC API module, you can now conditionally add the uh, uh, resync of VNet peers onto your um, peering object. Um, yeah, massive win. You, you could do it with AC API before, but it was a bit of a hack. But now they've made it a first class feature, which is amazing. Um, retries, this is the biggest one for me. And a slight humble brag because um, it was sort of me and my team's idea to, to add this to the provider because we were having so many problems deploying stuff at management group scopes. The reconciliation time for when you deploy stuff at management group scope is quite long. So if you, like if you put a policy definition at a management group and then you try to assign that policy definition at a child management group, it would sometimes complain, Azure would complain, say, oh, sorry, you can't, this, this definition is not in scope. Uh, and it was, it just hadn't reconciled it hadn't become consistent so with this retry feature we can with azure rm you you had to be using awful things like time sleeps and, and other really blunt tools to try and get around this problem but with az api now you can say actually if you get this error i want you to retry because i know that it's a transient error how long will it retry it will retry up to the uh, timeout value the real resource creation timeout value or the resource update timeout value whatever it is so you can have complete control over what is a retriable error and what is actually, uh, this is an error I want you to stop. Absolutely fantastic. It's gone from, for the Azure Landing Zones module, it's gone from having, you know, taking a few goes to apply it every time to applying it every time, first time in a single go. It's absolutely incredible. So for me, on features, AZ API definitely wins. Let's talk about developer experience. Azure RM is, is, is simple, it's, it's really easy to use and get started. It's idiomatic Terraform. It just the documentation is great, the language server is great. It's cool, it's brilliant. AZ API, well, the price you pay for all that control is that it is more complex to develop for. You need to be comfortable with the ARM resource schema. Um, you need to be comfortable with putting all the properties as an HCL dynamic object. The language server and docs are there, though that, that page over there I just showed you that has all the documentation for the resource is a really, really great help. The challenge comes when you want to have optional features in your module. So, that you, you know, you have if variable foo enabled, then, you know, do this. If not, do something else. The challenge is then you're either going to be using locals to define partial bits of that, that resource, or you're going to be uh, using inline ternaries or something like that to just switch things on and off. It's cool, you can do it. I'm going to do a separate video on module development for AZ API because I think it's an unexplored topic. And there are a couple of tricks that are really, really useful and a couple of patterns that I'm going to show you. But yeah, it is harder to develop for, not going to lie. The price you pay for all that extra, all those extra cool features is that you need to be slightly better at creating the modules. It's kind of a bit less forgiving. Like you need to, and BICEP authors will be familiar with this, but to get an idempotent configuration, you need to know which bits of the the resource uh, property to include and exclude, depending on what features are enabled. It's just, it slightly elongates the developer cycle. If you're coming from BICEP, then AZ API is the obvious choice, I think, just because you're completely used to it. So um, yeah, to wrap up, documentation, Azure RM is better. ARM compatibility, clear win for AZ API. Features, I think a clear win for AZ API. Developer experience, Azure RM is, is easier. So I hope that kind of helps you understand where you might want to use which provider. For me, so 
my advice is use whichever one makes you happy. Right? I'm, it's, a, it's a very personal choice. For me, I use AZ API for most things now because typically in the modules that I write, I'm going to be having to use AZ API at some point anyway because there'll be something I want to do that I can't do with Azure RM. As soon as you get to that point, actually, I'd rather have, I'd rather just do it all in AZ API because if you're managing modules over a wide uh, module estate, the, 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 the fewer dependencies you can have, the better. And if my module's dependent on Azure RM and AZ API, it just makes life more difficult when it comes to version upgrades and, and things like that. So typically I will default down to AZ API because of the, the reasons mentioned. Um, yeah, I hope that was useful. Um, it's normally a quite, uh, people get quite into this. And so I'd be interested to know what people think. Um, but that's my personal take on which provider to use. They're both great choices, but I would, if you, if you made me choose, I would pick AZ API. Anyway, that's it for this one. I'm gonna do a follow up on some of the new AZ API features and how to use them. Hope you found it useful. Uh, see you next time.